Welcome to On Pace with Shocker Track and Field. In this week's episode, the cross country team races to the finish of their season, while a couple of former Shockers run in one of the biggest races in the world. The Shocker cross country teams competed in their first ever American Conference cross country championships in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania last weekend. It was an exciting morning as Wichita State took the course at Hilly Belmont Plateau Park. The Shocker men placed fifth overall, just three points from fourth, and were led by senior Gage Garcia in 22nd place. The Shockers ran well as a pack, but some late season illness and injuries probably kept them from contending for a title in their first year in the conference. You know, I mean, basically when you have your number one and two guys that have been up there as your number one and two guys all year, finish fifth and seventh on your team, you're not going to do as well as you could. It hit us at the wrong time of the year and the wrong meet and really nothing we could do about it. So, um, you know, that's when we have people step up. I mean, like Dre Carson was uh, exceptional. You know, he was informed he needs to be the guy that's going to step in. He was the alternate. Um, that's an emotional thing to go through, to be told you're not going to make the team and then get on the team like that. And Dre came through with flying colors. He was just phenomenal and really proud of what he did. And um, that'll be a story I keep for the rest of my life. The young women's squad ran a strong race to finish in sixth place as a team, with six of the top seven being freshmen. Winnie Kosky just missed out on all conference honors as she led Wichita State in 18th place. And we were in a battle. I mean, we were in a battle for maybe uh, getting fifth all the way to eighth or ninth, I think, with about 400 to go. And so, you know, the girls did well. They battled and they came out sixth. I know that's not a super high finish, but for this young of a team and for the inexperience that they have, because we only had one girl that ever ran at a conference championship before on that team. So to have that kind of a group, um, I, I thought they did a tremendous job. I was really proud of the girls team. This weekend, the Shockers will head to Ames, Iowa for the NCAA Midwest Regional Championships. The top two teams automatically advance to the NCAA Championship Finals on November 18th at Louisville, Kentucky. Over 30 cross-country teams will converge on Iowa State's campus, where the women will run 6,000 meters and the men will run 10,000 meters for the first time this season. If you're going to attend this weekend's race, make sure to bring a coat, as the forecast for Friday in Ames appears to be around freezing. I want to go in there and beat the rankings that we are, and the women, I think, are, are not ranked at this time in the top 15. I would love for them to come out ranked. That would be a great, you know, ex exclamation mark on their season. Um, for the men, I want to beat the 14th ranking that we are right now. So go in there and do the best we can. Come out of there uh, looking better than we went in and show people that we are the team who we know we are. The New York City Marathon has long been considered one of the majors in the world of distance running. And this past weekend, a couple of former shockers ran towards the front of the elite women's field. Kellen Taylor and Alephine Tullyamuk ran much of the race in the lead pack, with Taylor eventually finishing eighth place and Tullyamuk 11th. Both athletes also finished among the top five Americans. Before the race, Tullyamuk was honored as this year's USATF Road Racing Series champion, where she has earned over $50,000 on the year. You can watch previous episodes of On Pace for interviews with both of these incredible former shockers. Every year, track and field head coach Steve Rainbolt sets out on a goal to golf and walk the number of holes that he is years old. This was a special year as Coach Rainbolt turned 60, so he added a fundraising golf scramble to the event. Here's a recap of the fun everyone had at Willowbend Golf Club. Look at that girl! That's sweet! What a shot! Bolt, uh, listen, I don't know what fire you were made in or where you came from, but you are a different guy and you are one of the more influential guys in my life. So I appreciate knowing you. Happy birthday. Uh, I don't know if it's a coincidence that it's around Halloween, but if I could shave my head and dress up like you this year, I would do so for Halloween. Uh, but I already have a costume. So, hey, uh, best of luck on this season and everything you got going on. Love you. See ya. Coach Bull, just want to tell you happy birthday. Pretty impressive what you've done over the last couple of years. And, and prior to that, as a coach there at Wichita State, so happy birthday to you, buddy. Enjoy your walk. Beautiful.
Uncle Dag. <laughs> Welcome to our roundtable discussion today. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about the life of a post-collegiate athlete in track and field and uh, road racing. And we have some terrific experts to talk about this topic. So sitting to my left is Darren Musi. He's the president of Shocker Track Club. We have Daisha Bullocks, who is a sophomore at Wichita State University. Mark Phillips is the head coach at Cowley County Community College. Raquel Stuckey, who herself is a post-collegiate athlete uh, and, and the, the owner of First Gear Running Company and Jason Parr, who is the head distance and cross country coach at Friends University. So I'll start with Darren. You're the president of a track club that has an elite group of athletes that do train um, and, and try to reach that next goal. So what are some of the challenges that you hear those athletes face and what are some of the things that you advise them to try to do? Certainly John, as the leader of that organization, it's been one of the more frustrating challenges for us. Uh, I want to be able to provide loads of money to the athletes so that they can focus on continuing training and develop their career. On the other hand, this is post-collegiate, and if we put this in the context of you have a degree, it's time to go out and go to work and get a job, that's difficult. And so it's very important to let the athletes know that the focus has got to be on doing this themselves in many cases. As a dad as well, you want to be a parent and a father figure and help out. Uh, I think the most important thing is making sure that the athlete understands that they're still going to have to work hard, but they've got to be focused and put their mind on a business sense as well. They've got to go out there and help uh, earn their way so that they have an opportunity to compete. Very important, but challenging. So Mark, you've seen a lot in the world of track and field over your years as a coach. Have you dealt with this issue much? And when I was at, uh, when I was coaching at Johnson County, we had several post-collegiate athletes that were training at our facility and the frustrations of their training time compared to their job time yes. because they had to work to make enough money to do what they were doing. And it, and it was, it was, you know, it was hard. It was hard to watch them struggle through this and not be able to do much for them. It just was. And, you know, um, one of the javelin throwers, he was in third place at the Atlanta Olympic trials until the last throw and didn't make the Olympic team. And he'd worked for four years after he got down to Arkansas to try and make that team. So tough, that's, that's tough just situation. what happens, yeah. Yeah, so Raquel, how do you balance this as being an elite runner, but also owning a company where you're obviously you're dividing your energies and your time. How do you how do you do this and stay at a, at a high level running? Oh, yeah, balance is such a, you know, it's just a word. Um, I don't know. I think you put dedication into your sport. You have to like it. You really do. You have to um, embrace the the challenges. You have to be able to be a little flexible with yourself mentally, with yourself physically, you know, um, at the end of the day, I still have to work, I still have to provide for my kids. So um, it's not, you know, it, you do put it into that perspective. You get serious when you need to get serious, you cut out the junk, you know, you cut out, okay, so I, I don't have time to do this and I'm not gonna do this and no, I'm not gonna go out on a Friday night or a Saturday night, you know, and those things, yeah, you get past it. You know, it's, it's really, um, it is unfortunate. Sometimes you get those opportunities to where you're so close and you don't make it, you know, and that's, that's just gonna happen. I think the, the real challenge for most post-collegiate athletes is how much are you willing to walk through the fire before you can, you know, make something happen. And that, I don't know, that's, that's just a testament of, of, of will, I think, for many. I mean, I don't think it's uncommon for athletes to end up practically homeless, you know, or living on couches and just because their dream is down the line. And it's, it's worth it. And if it's worth it to you to, to live that journey, then um, I think that's just the way to go. It's, it's a very difficult road. I'm not going to say it's easy. You know, it's, uh, I, it's taken me years to get there, so it's not, you know, but it, and it's, if you're willing to just sit there and, and take it and, and be in the calm and, and face it, then I, I think those things can, can happen. It, you just you can't lose focus and lose faith. So, yeah. Anything to add to that, Jason? Yeah, I think it, let's, let's think about every athlete in every sport who mm -hmm. is trying to make that post-collegiate opportunity. They, wanna, uh, they want another shot. 
Uh, a lot of them can't let it die down. Uh, there's still that desire to want to compete and train and, and go through the grind of, I think I have an opportunity to do that, and they're just waiting for that window. And like I said, sometimes you, you get a shot, and very few percent do. Uh, but then, um, you know, then there's other times where, all right, well, I guess I understand the reality of me not being able to make this. Now I become a road racer, or I get on a club soccer team or volleyball team, and, and I try to live that out through a hobby or desire that I have. And I think that's the next phase that happens after you've poured your heart into trying to make it for three or four years uh, after you've competed your collegiate career of still thinking you have what it takes. Um, and and I, you know, my thing is for those people, don't ever let that die down just because you get older. Continue to pursue the things you love and chase after it. But again, we go back to that word balance. So trying to, trying to make it all work, so. So I've noticed, uh, to me, the first year out of college seems to be the toughest because you're separated from your team. You don't have that accountability that the coach is on top of you for every single thing. So I think if you can get through that first year, in that way and financially, then it seems I've seen success. But that first year seems to be really tough. Uh, but what do you think? Do you think uh, about the post-collegiate world? Is, is track and field and, and, and road racing, it's, it's in a, diff, a difficult spot compared to like baseball or, or maybe some other, other sports that have more of a system after college. Um, how could that be better? What advice would you give those athletes? Feel free to add your discussion to our website and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Here's a look at the Collegiate National Championship cross-country schedule as well as the local road racing action coming up.